This is part one of a, I don't really know how many parts I'll need, a series going through the alphabet. Young Earth creationists tend to reject a lot of evidence, and don't quite get how much science they're calling wrong, and they're calling it wrong on a rather extreme level. So, given that they have no understanding of quite a bit of science, I feel I need to go back to the very basics. I'll start with the alphabet. Every letter, then, has a word that can show how young Earth creationism is demonstrably false. Some letters tie into others, but in general it's not very difficult to show ways to show young Earth creationism to be flawed on some rather inherent level. So without further ado, I begin at A. Archaeomagnetic dating. The seafloor spreads out at a relatively constant rate due to plate tectonics. Now when ferromagnetic materials, such as magnetite, cool and freeze, they contain information about the polarity of the local magnetic field at the time. You can then look at magnetite deposits under the ocean to locate geomagnetic reversals. That's because the magnetite will contain information about the polarity of the local magnetic field when it first formed. You can then tell the time, because of the constant rate of uh, C4 spreading, that passed between each geomagnetic reversal. Using this, we can go way, way beyond 6,000 years. Even if creationists want to argue that the rate of sea floor spreading didn't remain constant, to get 6,000 years of rather easy to date to recent deposits, you're still talking about three orders of magnitude faster. This can't be justified in any way unless you invoke, uh, God kept all life alive despite massive mass of earthquakes during absurdly fast tectonic movement because he's God and God can do that. Well, God can do anything, but the evidence still indicates a rather old Earth. For some reason, God wanted to show that a ton of geomagnetic reversal events took place deep under the ocean rather than just provide the evidence for a young Earth. Who could have guessed? Basalt. Basalt is volcanic rock, and it's deposited in layers as a result of volcanic explosions. Flood deposits would create a homoge homogeneous mixture of rocks. However, even if creationists argue that the more dense rocks would sink to the bottom, there's no possible way to explain the basalt in between different sedimentary layers, at least not using a flood. This is because there would be no method to distinguish between basalt, sedimentary layers, and more basalt in a flood-like environment, even if a flood was capable of layered deposits, which they're not. The basalt would have had to been deposited from separate eruptions, meaning there was no single uh, flood event that could account for all the basalt stratification we see. Finding basalt, sedimentary layers, and more basalt than more sedimentary layers would make no sense using a flood. It would make sense if you're talking about decent intervals between each eruption and sedimentary deposits being laid down as geologists expect, but not if the stratification we see was caused by a flood. It really can't cut it. Unless you invoke God yet again and say, well, God separated the layers contrary to what you would expect from a flood because he's God and God can do anything. Yeah, God can do anything, but the evidence sure as hell doesn't indicate a flood. C for the CMB. The CMB, or cosmic microwave background radiation, is brilliant evidence for the Big Bang. It's highly, highly redshifted light from the period in time in which the universe became transparent and photons were capable of moving freely. This would have been a massive, massive explosion of light, if you will, that happened some 300,000 years after the Big Bang and is continuing to reverberate around the universe today. Because the Big Bang would require such a hot universe that it originally wasn't transparent, the CMB would be a necessary result of the Big Bang and thus a necessary prediction. The fact that the CMB was predicted and then confirmed lends quite a bit of validity to the Big Bang. Furthermore, without the Big Bang, there's no real legitimate explanation of it. It's either God wanted an invisible microwave light signature out in space to indicate um, something, because he's God, or that it's the result of us being inside the Milky Way and all those stars that make it really, really hot is what's causing the CMB. Unfortunately for the latter group, um, it's rather easy to subtract the galaxy's influence provided you take a few measurements at different frequencies. For the former group, miracle, uh, God wanted it that way, so uh, he just 
put that signature out there because he's God? I don't know. Creationist logic never really did make sense to me, but um, just know that if you want to substitute God for some out there reason, the evidence still does support the Big Bang. D for dendrochronology. It's weird that even Kent Hovind agrees that tree ring dating works. According to a 2004 paper, we were able to use tree ring dating to go back over 20,000 years. That would kind of throw the 6,000 year creationist bit out the window. River oak trees extend uh, beyond 10,000 years. Dendrochronology isn't a thing creationists want to admit it works because, well, if you do, you're admitting that the Earth is certainly older than 10,000 years and most certainly older than 6,000 years. But who knows? God wanted to yet again make the tree rings be able to date back more than 10,000 years because he's God and he can do it. But again, the evidence really still indicates that 6,000 years is complete bollocks. So that's A through D. What have we learned? The seafloor shows geomagnetic reversals happening for far longer in our history than 6,000 years. That volcanic rock is a bad thing for young Earth creationists to look at if they want to keep their delusions. That the Big Bang has left a rather strong signature that we've picked up on and confirmed. And that even a technique the convicted felon Kent Hovind, a young Earth creationist, admits it's valid, invalidates his time scale. And I chose topics I find fun. I could have explained why C-14 dating actually works, provided you account for things like the reservoir effect, but Potholer54 has already done a brilliant video about why creationist C-14 claims are so, so very wrong. Thanks very much for watching part one. Any comments or criticism is greatly appreciated. If I got something wrong, please let me know so I could put a note in correcting the video. Or just tell me how much you love me. Either way, feedback is greatly appreciated. Hope to eventually get a second part up, but I think a trip to Whistler is in order before I try.